Thank you. Got it. You know, your name in the meeting looks like a unit. Uh, what do you mean? GGM. No, no, no. I'm talking about. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. So <laughs> just to puzzle people from the beginning. Yes, but you know, GGM. I probably <laughs> appeared automatically from a my email, but actually, I puzzled why is double G. So because. Why no Y, G I know, M I know, but this inside is something created automatically without my mm -hmm. knowledge and permission to, to correct. Well, maybe maybe um, I'll just do a, a brief introduction, Gennady, and, okay, and, and then we'll proceed. Uh, and, and, and thank you for everyone for, for attending. And uh, I see more people coming on even as we speak, but it's a real pleasure today to uh, introduce uh, Professor Gennady Mishuris. And Professor Mishuris uh, holds a personal chair in mathematical modeling in the Department of Mathematics at Aberystwyth University. And this has been since 2007. And uh, uh, this was when the Wales Institute of Mathematical and Computational Sciences was created. And in 1982, he graduated from Leningrad State University, and uh, uh, that's where he completed his PhD in 1985. And then he worked in the USSR uh, before moving to Poland in 1993. And uh, there he defended his habilitation uh, degree in Krakow University, and uh, this was in 1999. And in fact, he has the distinguished honor of being awarded the Alexander von Humboldt Scholarship to do research in Germany. And uh, he, he's also uh, uh, received the Lever Leverhulme Trust Visiting Fellowship in the UK in, in 2004. And in his re recent research in in interests lie in um, you know, various directions of applied mathematics and applications. And this includes uh, matrix factorization, wiener hof technique, modeling dynamic fractures. And he is a fellow of the Learned Society of Wales and uh, the Royal Society Wolfson Research Merit Award holder. So a great, great pleasure to introduce Professor Mishuris. Thank you very much, John. Thank you to uh to you and to Alex say to, uh, to allow me to, to speak at such a uh, distinguished auditorium here, audience, and it's a great pleasure and honor for me. Uh, so the, the topic uh, you see it here, uh, this is a core altered work with my, to my former uh, PhD students, Daniel Peck and uh, Gaspar Dafis and uh, Martin Dupko is, uh, uh, my uh, colleague from the rock field, because as you see later, this job, this work was done uh, on the support from the Welsh government, uh, Sir Kimbrough Industrial Fellowship. Uh, so the plan of, of my talk is here, as you can see it on the screen. So after introduction motivation, I will try to, to show preliminary result, what we could do with, with computation then, uh, what we uh, found uh, and could highlight as a result of those simulations that suggest some averaging strategies for, for the uh, uh, upscaling and not homogenization because this notion, in a sense, we can use homogenization techniques, but uh, homogenization, this effective toughness as a material param parameter doesn't exist. So then we verified our uh, suggested averages that show some uh, additional interesting effects and we'll finish with discussion. Um, so what I want to underline also that actually I will speak mostly, not mostly only about uh, hydraulic fraction in a sense as a application of, of, of this uh, theory, but in fact, it's a general theory. So it's not related to any specific type of, of fracture. And second, I try to uh, take uh, off any of mathematical formula if possible, because it would be have a lot of, of graphs and pictures, so it would be much more uh, illustrative and would not be um, too boring for someone who doesn't like too much uh, the, uh, the formula. So first, 
uh, I will use it for the computation with my colleagues. So we'll use the, the solver, which is actually, I mean, solver is it's a, it's a good word, but it's not user friendly. It's simply our own in house build. Uh, so we uh, call this uh, AUUA, so the Cyberspace Swiss University Universal Algorithm. So for, for the reason, uh, we started this uh, work together with uh, Professor Linkov, uh, with uh, working together with uh, um, European projects with some other partners. Uh, I don't want to 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 uh, to give the full details of someone interested, you can find this on, on the web, what was the project, it's finished in 2014. And the idea was to exploit the chance to build the solver, which would be using as a basic variables, not uh, the crack opening and pressure, but the crack opening velocity, since velocity is much better behave uh, parameter or values than, than the pressure. And uh, we build this, it works, uh, it's only one D solver. And uh, so uh, it's actually a, a part of what I mentioned. It uh, can compute any uh, uh, fracture regimes, any type of rheology, rate, Likov, toughness, whatever. Uh, it, it's the basic, un, 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 I mean, underlying issue is that it's, we use non uh, non singular elastic operator acting on, on these two. Uh, External variables, and then, of course, we're utilizing asymptotic all the, the knowledge what what we have from. Thank you to Minnesota Mafia. Uh, so we are using explicit fracture tracking algorithm, using the fact that we can compute velocity the correct tips or no problem whatsoever with this. And also, this is time adaptive, and then we can really do this very accurate and very detailed. So uh, we did. Uh, construct the planner 3D, we can do this, but it's, it's a work and uh, if, if, if needed and, and resources would permit, I, I would do this, but not in my free time. Uh, so we are using the algorithm, we estimated a lot of, of known information on the literature and we investigated also some new phenomena like uh, shear stress, uh, impact of the shear stress on the on the hydraulic fraction. Uh, we, 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 we showed that uh, something from the general fracture mechanics story, so that actually exists six stress intensity fact factors, not three, but I do not want to go in uh, deep in this. Then, as I just mentioned, I had this uh, recently together with Rockfield, uh, the uh, fellowship. Uh, and uh, um, Rockfield, you know Rockfield because, uh, in fact, I I already know that uh, colleagues from the company uh, presented twice and think on different armor seminars. So then you know that this is also example of what they could do easily, what I cannot do because I have only one D solver. Uh, so the question was actually what the the the, the basic. Uh, idea of this collaboration, what uh, our accurate solver could deliver that could be used for the commercial software. And first, uh, one of actually of the issues what uh, we looked at it was uh, what the influence of heterogeneity of the toughness, how this could be properly um, embedded in, in the uh, commercial software, anyway, in software. So since the uh, reservoirs is highly heterogeneous, then all the uh, the um, toughness or confined compressive stress uh, strengths are uh, showing the huge uh, heterogeneity as well. And also we have some scale effect related to different ideas why they should be or not. But the challenge is having the, uh, the data with uh, uh, detailed information, even from one millimeter, even even below, how to uh, implement this properly in, in the in the code. If we, if you are going to use the element of size of one meter or, or bigger, if you think of one kilometer crack. So this was the motivation of our uh, research is here. So what how how to upscale? If we upscale somehow, what would be the 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 result of the upscaling? What should be reasonable ideas under, underline the subscaling? Maybe we'll see something about the scale effect itself. And 
Uh, so this not coming from the sky rock field already uh, started doing this as you can see here. So what we tried to do, we started with, uh, with the, our solver. So we created something what we considered to be something like uh, very similar looking um, uh, distribution of toughness. Uh, in one D we can do, so let's, let's try to, to compute. So this is impermeable rock, KGD model, no leak off, constant fluid rate and um, constant elastic property. So we're not touching anything, we are touching only toughness. And then we try to compute. So what we can see as a result that, uh, so we use the um, moving average. So we started with the reference solution, what we really can compute very accurately. And then one uh, centimeter, three centimeter, 10 centimeters, 30 centimeter, one meter, three meter, 10 meters, uh, moving average and we compute the result. And actually if you're using, uh, comparing the reference solution to one meter uh, moving average, we see that even moving only on a hundred meters, we have hundred percent inaccuracy. So we were really amazed of, of looking like this. So we tried to understand what is going on here. So we created two basic uh, toughness distribution we called the sinusoid that will be everywhere along the, the this by talk and, and toughness, stepwise toughness. So, so uh, we will consider three. Um, so we fix the, 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 um, the pumping rate. So everything what would be fixed was consider three different types of the toughness distribution apart of this division in sinusoidal and stepwise. We'll have also some sets, what I called here, um, toughness, toughness, so it means that mix, uh, maximum and minimum toughness would it be only constant toughness, both create the, what would be considered as a, as a toughness regime. Then something intermediate would be something that maximum would be in a, uh, in a moderate toughness and uh, below the minimum would be in moderate viscosity and the, the third would be both in, in viscosity dominated regime. Actually, what we also learned from at the time that uh, there is uh, the great idea of uh, maximum toughness, I will tell this creation, but actually the strategy maybe would be better uh, wording uh, published by, by Edgar with Carter in 2021. They, they really clearly explain why the maximum should be. Uh, so why, why you can use maximum and then you are not far away for, from the reality, but uh, I will show you how, how it is in, in, in fact. So um, we also will use, I will use in my pictures also the um, uh, uh, parameter, what I call local propagation regime indicator delta. Uh, so if you think about the first, I, I thought that there is no mass. So there's only one equation so what, what, what happened here in the call. So this is inversion, uh, in, invert operator. So we have the, uh, opening as a uh, usually uh, inverse operator acting on the pressure, but doing very small uh, manipulation with the uh, integration by parts. So you have actually two parts. So one is uh, this integral operation acting on on the on the gradient of pressure. Actually, this gradient of pressure, as you remember, actually, if you know the the rheology, it's would based on on the, uh, as I just mentioned. Uh, crack opening and fluid velocity. And the other part is, is exact term, what is, uh, with the, with the, so if you think about those openings, two parts, like one associated, it's it's not really absolutely correct, but it's enough for, 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 for understanding. So this is um, uh, attributed to toughness, this is attributed to viscosity, and then you compute the amount of, of fluid basing on these two opening, so you would have this parameter created. So it's a amount of fluid according to this divided by amount of fluid, of fluid according to that. And apparently if this parameter is very small, or very big, it has a clear relation with the standard scaling, what you can find in, in, the, in, in, in the hydraulic fracture uh, publications. So we have, as I just mentioned, three data set. So this DS1 would be, as I just mentioned, toughness, toughness. There are also numbers here. I don't want to concentrate on numbers because here's most important to understand the idea. So toughness, 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 uh, 
um, viscosity, 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 something like that. And the other parameters using computation are below. So the first computation, what we have, we take toughness, toughness regime, and we compute the correct length. Actually, it's half of full length. So then for the future, if I'm not telling half, you, you understand that we're speaking about half. So uh, apparently, this uh, this MTS criterion works perfect. So you see that on the scale here, you cannot see even difference between the accurate numerical simulation with all the details uh, uh, addressing the, the toughness distribution and the maximum would be, I mean, you do not need to do anything. So with the correct length is perfect. So if you think about the pressure and the ejection point, it's also perfect. So the same story. So, okay, the accurate here, the accurate behavior is crazy, but on the level of, 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 of a scale, what you are thinking about here, uh, as you saw, it would be like 350 meters. It's, it's perfect. So everything is, is okay. You can replacement uh, really strategy. You should not be very worried about the result if you're thinking about the length, but so the but is that if you think about the uh, the large time or, or length, so it's perfect. It's less than 1% in accuracy in all the parameters, what at least is written here. It's half length, pressure and ejection point and width and the ejection point as well. But if you go in, in, into very beginning of the press uh, of the process, so at least to have five percent, you should be here. Um, okay, it's more or less fifty second. If you go back uh, to fifty second here, then on the fifty second we have hundred. So if you do not. Do not mind what is going on less than 100 meters. You can use it without any, any, I mean, any worry. But if yes, then, then we need to think what to do. So let me look how this parameter actually, this delta behaves. And uh, what is interesting here that uh, this delta is, doesn't want to sit between delta attributed to the maximum toughness and that delta attributed to the minimum toughness, but actually we're shooting it at five times uh, above and 10 times below. Uh, and when you look at how the velocity of the, uh, the, the crack uh, speed uh, behaves, it's a bit of, of a madness. So you see that in a log log scale, it's actually a straight line for anything, for average, maximum, minimum toughness. But if you look at the real oscillation toughness, what we considered, it behaves like that. And relatively, with, for the long crack, it's, it's this relative difference is huge, really. Uh, so what happened with the energy? So this is the uh, energy spent for the fracture creation, also behaving quite, quite, quite interesting. Also, uh, energy what used to uh, uh, overcome the fluid resistance, behaving most, mostly also crazy way. What is interesting is the accumulated elastic energy here, because it's actually not only accumulating, but also giving the energy back. And this is really important in that type of propagation. This is one of the most important issue here that, in fact, the crack is moved not only by the pumped fluid from, from inside, but time to time is more actually affected by the uh, energy, uh, elastic and, and energy accumulated by the solid. Uh, so, just to, to underline the accuracy of the computation, of course, we are putting tolerance on the crack lengths and, and uh, sorry, on, uh, on the um, opening and the velocity. But as you can see, the, how the balance condition is satisfied with this actually secondary value, a secondary issue in the post-processing in a sense, it's, it's, it's unbelievable nice. So this accuracy, you can really believe what we are seeing here, what we are computing here. So, okay, let's go then to the case when we have the, the uh, viscosity, viscosity rhythm. So it's another, uh, another issue. Now the difference between the maximum and the minimum, that's so small that something what is going on in between this doesn't care. So you have the result that you can use any of the strategy for the computation, what is quite clear because you have a viscosity dominator, why, why you think the toughness should, should, should 
that much influence the, the, the story. And then, uh, then you are inside the 5% in accuracy on the all time of your process. It, of course, at the end, it would be even, even better, uh, near 1%, but even better. Actually, what is interesting that always the computation for stepwise is much uh, closer to MTS than, than computation for the sinusoid. Uh, and what is also interesting here that, as you can see, uh, the delta, this uh, local indication, indicator, actually practically sitting between the maximum and minimum. A bit of a shooting the, the maximum, but not, not much. But, but the velocity is still behaving very strangely. So if you, okay, it's very small velocity for the long track, it would be really, I mean, something like one tenth of the meter per second, but as you see, the re relative uh, difference between the maximum and minimum instantaneous speed is huge still. Even for the viscosity, viscosity dominated uh, regime for maximum and minimum, we still have really a huge influence of, of this uh, heterogeneity. Okay, so let's see how it works. So, at first, uh, we just simply comparing what is happening if we compare the uh, toughness uh, in, in heterogeneity with the, uh, with the variable pumping. You see that from the first glance, we, we see the same picture uh, on here, on that part of this, of this video, you see the instantaneous uh, crack speed. The red line is corresponding to the maximum toughness. So after 10 or more or less uh, pe pe periods, uh, even with a with a variable pumping, you cannot see really difference uh, between the uh, the constant uh, pumping and and the, uh, the 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 maximum average. But here, this difference really coming down, and then you see this all the time as I just show this that velocity really uh, playing this uh, strange game. So what happened if you look now? This is direct comparison between the maximum. MTS uh, algorithm and the dark uh, very accurate computation. So the first is corresponding to the sinusoidal. This is for stepwise. Uh, here, it, it, as I mentioned previously, it's uh, instantaneously instantaneous correct uh, correct speed. Uh, on the on the right hand side, you can also observe the profile of the net pressure, and this is very interesting to see how this net pressure near the crack tip really uh, jumping uh, with, with crossing the, each particular uh, layer of, of different material in terms of toughness. Then uh, now uh, we see that if you are trying to combine both of them, so I'm doing now the periodic toughness and simultaneously doing some variation with the pumping, and in fact, this uh, accumulated, accumulated uh, regime would be only visible on a few first, maybe five, 10, again, uh, periods. And later, we'd see the same story as was for the constant pumping. So really, pumping is only if you do even, even this uh, in a variable fashion, you would not uh, have really impact for the, for the long, even moderate practice. Okay, so when we look at this, then in a, in a sense, this M MTS uh, idea of Crete perfectly working. So what behind of this miracle, why it's going to, to the maximum, uh, actually uh, Igor uh, explained this by, by hands, I would say, but would like to see it more accurately why. And the idea what uh, can we, oh, the next question, can we really improve this strategy if we want to know something well, for the moderate uh, crack length or from the very beginning of the, of the process and still be accurate enough. So the, the, the idea come to my mind was, well, let me sit on the crack tip and observe the, the, the things around us, things around us, I mean the toughness. So what we would see as a result of this sitting that uh, now the, the toughness distribution in a sense in time would be looking quite different in comparison to what we saw in space. So you see that uh, going with time uh, with a uh, longer, longer crack, we're sitting the support of the maximum is much higher than support for the minimum. So this makes sense to say, okay, we should probably um, 
homogenize or do the average uh, not on on the space but in time so this was the 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 conjecture so the conjecture is let's let's try to uh, average in time clearly that the, the this measure would be not a material parameter because we have no idea what is the how the crack will will propagate with time so this is something as a result of, of the process or the result of the computation um so actually this important issue here uh, i'm i'm since i'm averaging toughness uh, we should remember that much more clever and natural way it's averaging ever uh, energy not not the toughness but in this particular problem when we have constant uh, elast elastic parameters it's locally it's completely equivalent formulation so it doesn't matter we can do this but we will see it later that how it works really interesting so what we have as a result of that computation with time all those measures Mm, they're behaving really very interesting so they're really going to this schema so nice 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 feature so we are actually capturing that this uh, measures something uh, but there are problems here first of all if it's moving average it's not progressive but moving average so what should be the frame for the averaging here we computed for time 10 seconds 30 seconds and 90 seconds if you try to do this very short time then that makes no sense because you are actually coming reproducing original toughness as a result it would be much much uh, vibrating the same in the same way as, as the original one so it would be it's not clear what is better 10, 10, 10 seconds or 30 seconds so it's another question uh, and also we do not know what would be uh, better uh, measures so progressive averaging or, or moving averaging so then uh, the next is when we have the when we agree that the, the measure makes sense let me think if if we assuming that we know anyway the the, the length of the crack with time this low then why not to come back to the space and come into the space it's absolutely equivalent uh, measures uh, mathematically speaking it's very nice story so we have actually we need to uh, we have normal normalized normalized averaging with the weight one over velocity what is very interesting so this velocity is also of course process dependent uh, parameter but it shows again what is going on why we're capturing the maximum because if you are in the space very close to maximum toughness you have the minimum velocity and vice versa so it's clear why they are really preferring, pre preferring the maximum toughness it shows why and it's interesting that this measure is very consistent. So if you put the constant velocity, you have standard average, nothing new. And if you consider the constant toughness, you simply um, reconstruct the same constant toughness, very nice. So if you start now computing this measure, depending on, on space, not on time, uh, we see that uh, it's from the uh, beginning of the process you see this on the comparison of the real distribution of the toughness here and there interesting so it's very promising it's going up and then uh, for the full process for the long period for the long uh, process for the big time deep lengths so it's really going to the to the k max of course it's still not k max it's still not reached the, the maximum value but it's very nice looking also what is interesting that uh, here we have standard and i would say natural uh, average frame so it's one period five period ten periods whatever you wish and what is interesting that after 10 periods the 10 periods this would be always uh, with us so looking the you cannot see any difference actually after 10 periods you would you would have this um, measure practically unrecognizable very interesting also you see that always um, the moving average is always higher than than the uh, than the progressive uh, uh, progressive the speed progressive average here but the question is what is better it's it's, it's still question remains so let me try to to underline this since we have all the computations already we produce the the average then we have again compute the 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 result using only the average and then we'll compare with the original uh, an original detailed computation and, and computation using the the mts uh, mts uh, criterion and those criteria what we have now 
So you see the result. Uh, it's for the difference between the uh, moderate toughness, moderate viscosity. So it's something in between. It's not that pronounced uh, huge difference in, in the, from the very beginning. But uh, whatever we are speaking about, we see that, that uh, all progressive and moving average, um, I, mean, I mean, giving better result than MTS, apart of the fact that MTS is, is perfectly okay. It's, you can also use it, only remembering that from the very beginning of the process, you would have much more accumulated errors. And it looks like the moving average is better than, than the progressive average. So this is first conclusions from, from this part of, of the talk. Then, uh, as I just mentioned, the uh, locally uh, toughness and, and fracture energy is absolutely equivalent formulation in this particular setting when the elasticity is the same. But what happens if we use the uh, energy averaging, not toughness averaging? So again, the, this is L2 norm, previously was L1 norm, mathematically speaking, now it's L2 norm, but it's more or less the same issue. We can compute everything. Also, it gives you the same consistency analysis, so very nice uh, measure. And, and it also works in the sense that if you compare now toughness, toughness, and toughness velocity, uh, viscosity, so moderate toughness, moderate viscosity cases, you see that um the uh, they're all coming to to k max so the 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 faster going this uh, energy uh, moving uh, moving average with uh, based energy based then you have moving average uh, toughness based and the, the this is other direction uh, what is also interesting here that just think it's not the simulation it is some really measurement from from the field or from from your lab and of course, you do not, hold, do not have all these details. You have here one, two, three, five points at each of these. Actually, you cannot measure anything here. This probably would not measure because it's too large and too big uh, time and, and track. So this is really what you can measure. So what you can measure is the, the, the clear trend. What is this overload dependent so on, on the length, but with different uh, Trendy, so the, the 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 order would be different depending on on the on the regime. And if you compare now again the same toughness viscosity with viscosity viscosity, you see the trend would be different. Now, I mean it's also going up, but with completely different order of. But at at some point it will change the trend, and would behave exactly in the same way. Even for viscosity viscosity, even it's so it's not that important. Okay. So if you now consider the really the overall, all those measures, energy and, and toughness um, averaging, and uh, MTS is here, the, the, again, the, uh, the, the blue, you see the best uh, averaging is naturally energy-based moving average. Very interesting. It's appeared from the case where, where the locally both averaging, uh, both the both criteria or both fracture criteria, they are equivalent. But when you're doing averaging, energy based is, is going better. Okay. So then we do the other cons consistency check. So think about this. So, okay, we created now the, uh, the somehow we were able to create the average. We compute the result. So uh, first, we compute very accurately the, the, the whole process. Then we created the average. Then using this average, we again computed the same process. And we computed the average using the same methodology again. So what would be the difference between this average and this average? If it there would be huge difference, then the, the question is what the hell? So what, what the, you created something, but probably we should do something better, better and better. So that's not really the end of the procedure. So when you look at, at the result, it's a simply a ratio of, of two progressive averaging, simply what would be the, the, the ratio between them. So the ratio between the moving averages after again, this magic 10, more or less than 10 periods become negligible. So this is some, again, very good in, indication that the, 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 this type of averaging is very good. 
If you said it's enough to do once and then next time, you know, whatever you are doing first time period, you should really take care about what is going on near the cryptic. But later you should forget about this and but to forget about this, you know what to do more. And the last consistency check is here simply, let's try to, to sweep the, the, the order of the, of the layers. So then if previously was first more tough and then, uh, and, and then the next was less tough, then we do this vice versa. And we compute the result. And you see that from again, again, this first, first, first layer, you see that they actually shift in, 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 in the result. But after this 10, 10 layers, you don't see any difference at all. So after all this consistency check, I mean, after all this, so it looks like we have some time to, to, to conclude. So what to conclude is, so we, we proposed some, some, the, uh, some measure which is a bit, time, time more, the time a bit awkward than MTS prediction. So progressive average gives better result from the very beginning, from first one, two layers, not more. Then vice versa, the moving average produced much better result than, than the progressive average. And moving average based on energy arguments is the best one. There is a huge but. The but is that the, the question remains unanswered. Okay, we know the measure, but how to deliver this measure if you are not doing numerical sim sim uh, simulation in front of, 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 of using this measure. And since the, the measure is process dependent, I can simulate, just think about, I can simulate once and then I give you the, the measure and you're using another pumping rate and you have different result because actually it was simulated from, from something else because it's process dependent parameter. And so, but it's, uh, so I, I like finishing with, with a bad story, but immediately underpinned by the good story again with a result that actually maximum toughness give, gives really not bad result, whatever you think about this. So if it's, if you think about one kilometer track, it's, it's very nice. So that should be something that we can do the, the job. And, For some reason, okay, uh, moment. Yes, so let me do some more stuff. So I, I just mentioned about KGD. Now I'm speaking about radial crack. I'm not going to show all the, the same result, uh, only a few, but the idea is uh, everything remains the same. So we have the crazy behavior of the instantaneous uh, crack speed. Uh, this uh, local regime indicator now not constant, it's changed, but uh, the same is with, uh, with all the, uh, the regimes associated with using any of the averaging parameters here. Actually here I started to, to I need probably to have a few words telling what is 2P, 2M, 2C, 2L. So if you have moving average, you have starting from the point and finishing with the point and the length of the average is one, or one meter or whatever the period or 10 periods as you wish. But you can always, if you think about uh, when you have finite difference, you can have uh, left uh, finite difference, right finite difference and mid finite difference. So the same you can do here in the, with the average in more when you can do in this, for example, with this left or, or mid, you can take into account from the very beginning, you can take to, into account the progressive bit of this near the, near the, the, inside the first layer. So this gives you really chance to, to accommodate even for, for the, for the perfect accuracy from the very beginning. So then, as you can see the same for the, for the uh, radial uh, crack, more or less the same type of behavior. Um, uh, the same trend you can see if, in terms of uh, increasing after some fewest layers or then with, with, with space or time, whatever you're computing. And the last interesting case is, think about since we are speaking all the time about MTS, about maximum, 
uh, let's do the absolutely funny story. So we we try to have the support for this mask for this maximum is very very small, very short. So I think it's it's a standard distribution, half half. So half of of the toughness is a large maximum toughness, half is a minimum toughness. But here you have maximum only one. Uh, so the support is one over thousand. So it's actually should not be even visible. It's simply showed here like to 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 underline the the story but uh, you see we can compute measure can be still created what is interesting the the, the ratio between the uh, correct speed um, max and correct speed minimum correct speed here at, at the same point when we measure this would be increasing of two uh, on two orders but if you look at at the comparison with the with the result after doing averaging, it's still very good only for the for this crazy maximum behavior we have from the very beginning, one order we're losing, actually less than one order accuracy using averaging than, than, this, than the very accurate computation. And also uh, these three moving averages, I just mentioned what, what they are for. Okay, uh, so let me try now to uh, to summarize the computation from both KGD and radio. So the understanding that this local regime is really uh, changing in, in, in space and time locally, it's crucial to understand the global behavior of the hydraulic fracture propagation. This is actually showing and explaining why we are going to, 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 uh, to maximum toughness. But even small toughness variation, even in viscosity, dominated global viscosity dominated regime but in fact I put something in brackets some other local parameters not only related to toughness but some local which would go in with the crack together near the crack tip would lead to the same velocity oscillation and, and relatively would be more pronounced for the long crack clearly why because your um, impact how you really put this crack it becomes smaller and smaller, but the effect of local uh, variation becomes relatively higher and higher. So we know that uh, moving average based on energy is the best uh, prediction. KGD radial produce more or less the same outcomes with their own uh, peculiarities clearly. Uh, okay, the, the initial propagation uh, stage is sensitive for averaging, but I just mentioned how we can uh, how we can deal with this, uh, trying to, to, to beat from the very beginning, accumulate for the progressive one. Again, maximum toughness is the main important parameter. You still have use, uh, be happy to use this, this uh, criteria or this strategy to, to compute, no problem whatsoever. Of course, of course, if it's if the elastic material also would be not constant, then you would need to change maximum toughness with maximum energy. But I'm not speaking about this here in this presentation. But the problem remains the same. So how to how to deliver without without uh, previous uh, previously doing simulation? Because otherwise, it makes no sense. If I can do very accurately simulation, why I need this average at all? So for the length crack. Crack. So the, this is my, I would say, a suggestion how to deal with this. If if the the crack is long and you are interested in what is going for the long crack, use the the MTS strategy. If you, if you are interested in what is going also in the intermediate stage, simply match the minimum, the maximum with some in monotonic way, trying to account for the uh, for the global scaling. You show the trend is a bit different, but this needs additional additional work. Uh, so if you possess a very effective solver capable accurately computing uh, the interesting instantaneous track speed, then simply do accurate simulation, first five, maximum 10, periods and then switch to the, you have the trend already done, link this trend to the maximum and there you are perfectly okay. So it will be very accurately computing simply. This should be embedded in your in your code to, to switch from this to, to that type of, of, of moving. The other way is to, 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 to develop a piece of software simply using um, a, a 
some some computation for the for 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 different type of distribution of toughness then accumulate all the data and then create the uh, machine learning technique and probably would have something not bad especially you see the difference is not huge in terms of, of the results can we do a bit something clever yes we can but it's still work on on, on the way so i cannot really show you something 100 percent sure hopefully next time if if we'll be given this this chance to show this uh, so what i want to say but unfortunately the material is not periodically i mean toughness or whatever other property are not periodically distributed so actually uh, we need to think how to do with that but the good news is that the average what what we discussed here doesn't care about this periodicity it simply should be something like uh, average frame but average frame you should not take from periodicity we should take like a rve and that would be good enough uh, okay it's some interesting story at the end what is the acceleration uh, of the crack tip uh, so it's even in a viscosity viscosity dominated regime this d s3 uh, data set 3 case you see that it's difficult to sustain if you're sitting on on the crack tip and having 3g acceleration i don't know who from us would survive in 100 uh, g would be probably nobody will survive but if you think about uh, the uh, toughness toughness distribution this acceleration is so huge that it's even difficult to to discuss about this near the crack tip so what's the, this creates some some questions this question i will try to articulate a bit later and next what i would like to show you is the what is going on inside the crack tip when the crack is moving in such a material so apparently there is a piece of the of the fluid which would be even moving in the opposite direction to the to the crack movement so this uh, when v is equal to zero so inside the crack actually this is relative position along inside the crack and here it's it's a length of the crack so up to the point that you have again miracle 10 but it's it's coincidence here 10 period so you don't have such a such an issue so even uh, fluid inside the crack really not uh, moving uniformly but it's not moving in the opposite direction but starting from that point it's starting something so if you see it at the zoom you will see some hockey hockey sticks here so inside the hockey sticks would be negative uh, velocity so uh, the fluid moving in opposite direction and in all other pieces would be in in, in the same direction as a crack tip if you look this closely as a zoom uh, of that event in time and the space so in, in time it's very very fast you see it's it's something like a fraction of a second this red red color but in space it's really that that stick so it's starting here but increasing the the part of this actually it's from that part to this part you see a lot of of, of fluid moving in the opposite direction than the crack tip and this is actually because of this you remember i mentioned about the energy the elastic energy accumulation by the solid so when the the we have uh, this uh, energy given back from the solid to 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 the process it accumulate it's it's move the the crack tip faster but simultaneously move some piece of fluid back inside inside the fracture okay so what the questions arising from from this last few slides so uh, what is this um, huge acceleration would it be somehow affect the energy balance so the, another question can we really um, not to to take into account uh, uh, the inertia effects in this uh, computation should we take them uh, on the board or not so this is question we need to check if we are try now to, to to deal with this but it's it needs also uh time and, and details uh, then the other question is uh, if you think about the the uh, the really the acoustic events so then, then maybe they are associated with this strange movement of the crack of the fluid inside the crack and maybe if you recorded something you may be be able to to 
to indicate or to, to, to evaluate even the, the rock heterogeneity and even to be more accurate about prediction where the track tip is. Uh, so another issue is, okay, you saw what is going on with the fluid inside the, the, the crack. And if, if you're not using the simplest rheologies, for example, it's Carullo, then it means that it would affect really the, 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 the process and simultaneously it vice versa would be affect the, the, the behavior of, of the fluid. And shear stress actually is not really important here because of evident reason I don't want to speak about this. Uh, so it, is this analysis can explain us this uh, tendency, this, uh, this uh, scale effect can be really deliver the order from this analysis. The question is how this vibration of the fluid actually affect the prop and particle settlement. It's also a question. What about the, the lack, local lack, lack creation and, and trace of the lack during this process is a question, maybe something else, but you already, I see that eight uh, questions appeared. So I try, try to go to the last, to the last slide of my talk. So local peculiarities of this process is very important for the for understanding. So we deliver the measure. So uh, so we are already suggested how to, to, to compute this measure in a sense, more or less accurate. So we still uh, believe that MTS is, is good enough. And, but if you want to do something more accurate, you can do this. So also anything like stress barrier, actually I will show this in, in his last paper, but uh, some other phenomena you can easily put inside and they all would be inside the, this measure through the parameter uh, velocity, what crack, crack tip speed or crack tip velocity. So if you know this, how this all other uh, phenomena would influence, you can have the proper measure. So the question is energy, uh, inertia effects is still opening. And so the, this is, I just mentioned that it's not only for periodic, it's for any, some random, some distribution of the, of the material could be used. So the, my talk actually mostly based on the first two papers, what I'm showing here, but uh, I also mentioned some other, uh, what is going on papers, what is going on recently. And you see that actually attracted some, some interest from the, uh, our French colleagues and from Edgar and his group. And they are trying also to do something. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you to my colleagues and Rockfield for collaboration. And really great thanks to Welsh government. They really allowed us to, to develop all those uh, uh, results. Thank you. And and thank you, Gennady. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot to digest there. And fascinating. And and it did bring up a few questions. And so yes. do you can you see the questions or do you want me to read them? Uh, I will try now to see them. Okay, I go to the questions. I see them. Uh, okay, moment. Impermeable restrictions imposed. Can the velocity base to handle? Yes, I, I already uh, answered in the last that leak of uh, stress barriers and so on, everything could, could be in, in embedded inside. So simply we started from that. So if you need one, it would be easy. Uh, so our solver allows to, uh, to use all of this, but our solver has very strange and, and strict restrictions. So we cannot do anything with uh, uh, at least immediately with uh, changing uh, elastic material properties and we cannot do 2D, 3D. So this is only 1D. All other can be done. Okay, it's... Uh, uh, in practice, the purpose of upscaling is to use coarse mass. Yes, so what happened with the early time issue when you run various upscaling simulation with the mesh equal to period of... Uh, I didn't check it, but so if you, uh, Edgar, if you want me to, to guess, I will try to guess. If not, then better to, to have more, uh, more discussion about this. No, we're anxious for you to take a guess. Okay. Ah, okay. Upscaling to use coarse mass. So, with the early time issue when you run various 
Steel simulation with the mesh equal to period of oscillation. So I usually uh, move in with the period of oscillation. So it's it's always the same. So the, actually, this I already mentioned that I would say up to five periods you should be very very accurate. After this, you should not really take care too much about this. If you if you want to be as accurate as I showed to you, then 10, 10 periods, you should do this very accurate mesh. Then after, after this, you, you, you can do whatever you wish. Okay. It's only comment from, from Alexis. So uh, no, how to define the highest happen. resolution for toughness for practical problem. Actually, this is something what, what I'm thinking of now. And I, uh, I already spoke about Alexi about this. So uh, the, the question is, uh, remember, I showed even to to underline this issue. I showed you the the slide where the support for the for the uh, for the maximum toughness is very very small, but it's still it's still uh, really showing that it's 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 uh, the major impact from here. It's actually also I believe Eva also mentioned about this. The question actually is uh, to trace the maximum values is very difficult from the data what we have. And of course, we don't have periodicity in this. So what to, to do with the tail, what is really cutting, what we couldn't capture, for example, you have one layer was of the thickness 0 0.00 millimeter, which is huge toughness in it. So you are probably not catching you in your, when, you, when you do even your very accurate uh, uh, measurement. But if you think that they exist, so how to, to, to deal with this, how this would affect the full, the full story, this is matter of discussion and, and still we are thinking about how to do this. Okay, do you think chirpy propagation might be considered as compared to the average propagation? Yes, I already showed that, that if you do this, uh, the, the not, not taking care, you can really easily, so if you simply, set your averaging as, as, as a size of elements or do the coarse meshing, then you can have decent, decent error and even do not uh, making not uh, realizing this. So this really you should try to, to do some preparation at, at least when you do this type of, of averaging. Yes, it's possible. So this already mentioned this this 10, 10 periods. So 10 periods, it's a maximum what you should really take care of for, for any type of, of computation. I, I would say five, it would be good enough. Yes, so, okay, this is very good from, from, from Jian Huang, for the very good question. And present for fracture propagation direction is always perpendicular to the orientation of the, if parallel to the heterogeneity presented average of scaling, could be nice, uh, nicely extended to the estimate fracture. Yes. So actually, this is what to say about this. First of all, if you think about, forget even about a hydraulic fraction. If it's, why the why the homogenization issue for the toughness makes no sense. Think about you have the composite with the uh, balls inclusions like like balls, and then if you are applying. Uh, not much uh, forces, and then the, probably your crack would like to pro propagate in the matrix, avoiding all the stiff inclusions. But if you put a lot of effort to this propagation, then the crack will propagate straight and intersect this, this ball. So my point was here that the direction was always was pre 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 preserved. But uh, in, in the reality, you should think not only about the, the, the toughness, heterogeneity, but also the the trace or the path of the crack. The good news for the hydraulic fraction, what is, why is the best possible problem what I only can see in the fracture, that you really have the orientation of the crack move movement because of the stress on the ground. So this is really something given information what, what you can uh, really uh, use effectively in, in, in the computation. We did so Gennady, we, we, about... had a, we, yes. we had, uh, people were asking you if you'd read the question aloud before you answer it, because yes. not everyone can see it. Okay. Oh, okay. We did something clever about the analysis, uh, the observed treating pressure. We did something clever about the analysis. Okay, so then I don't know what I should comment. So I probably need to, to, to read this and to, to then to answer because I don't know what to, to answer. Interesting presentation. Could you go back to your references page? Yes, I will do now. Okay, moment. 
uh, I, I, I'm now on, on a reference page. So what, what is what in here? And, I don't and this, have... this is being recorded as well. So if, if somebody wants to look at the references. Okay, um, oh, okay, okay. okay. Have you look at the track parallel uh, shear stress, T-stress? No, I'm not speaking about uh, T-stress and about all this criteria related to T-stress. So actually with the with, uh, with redirection and curving of the crack, I'm not touching this, this, this uh, issue at all, because in this case, I mentioned that uh, shear stress phenomenon is not that important in this particular uh, problem, that averaging of the toughness because of a uh, trivial reason. So we showed when the shear stress effect actually acting the most showing the, the pronounced effect only in the viscosity dominated regime. But for the viscosity dominated regime, this, as I showed here, there is no really too much need to be done. So for that reason, uh, shear stress not influences that type of the story. But another type of the story is huge influence of the uh, shear stress when, when you speak about redirection of the crack. So I'm not having time for, to, to, to discuss this, but yes, you can you can you uh, this is another level of discussion about redirection of the crack about the, the the direction of the crack propagation what to do in 2d case because i'm speaking in, about 1d so if you're sitting in, on on the radio you know that everything would be propagated it's one story but if one side propagating another simply not propagating this is some some other issues what should be discussed and then oh. maybe the, the final question, the, the, one, the last question on anisotropy, and then we're going to have to wrap it up. Okay. Okay. How heavily do you consider anisotropy in, in, in your analysis? If it's only anisotropy, you mean anisotropy of, of, of what? So if, if my 1D problem could be reformulated, rescaling, so on to, to preserve 1D, I can do this easily. If it would be not, then, then it's, 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 it's a matter of discussion. OK, fantastic. I think I'm on, on the last. Yeah, fan, fantastic. I mean, very provocative and, and insightful. And, and uh, on behalf of all of us, I'd really like to thank you for doing this presentation. It was, it was, it was tremendous. OK. so. If if you if you wish to see where Arbery Swiss is, what I told that I do probably I don't know what timing I'm completely out. So if, if anybody wants to to stay, here's here's a, a little bit of geographical context. So, okay, so, it's it's only three seconds. So yes, it's very fast. So then, where is this place? Is Arbery Swiss? It's it's in mid Wales, middle of Cardigan Bay, and middle of Norway because it's very difficult to reach. It's at this part of the of the Wales. So this is the town where the oldest Welsh university actually uh, situated. It's the, the in 2022 we celebrated uh, 150 anniversary of, of the of the university. This is nice view from uh, from one of the top of the hills on the on the town. Then it's a night view of the town. You can have a nice drink and we have a lot of pubs here. We have also marine. So if you have your own yacht, if you feel rich enough with oil and gas extraction in, in America, please, 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 you're welcome to arrive. But be careful about the weather because we have time to time something like that. Okay, so this is everything about geography and, and the weather forecast. <laughs> well, th thank you again. And, and thanks, everybody for for attending. And uh, if, if you have additional questions that come to mind, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure um, Professor Mishuras would be happy to answer them directly. Yes, absolutely. I'm happy to answer any questions. So please uh, direct them to me via the, our chairs or directly. You can find my email. So then I'm happy to, to, to answer if I can. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you again. So that, that was outstanding, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, for, really for me a pleasure and an honor to give a talk and, and such an audience. I hope it would provocative enough and hope people would uh, comment and, and uh, hit me back. <laughs> well, you know, you really have me thinking, and, but 
you know, I'm always thinking about the inverse solution because we know so little, so little about the formations um, as they actually exist and what we can extract as, as back analysis is, is what really fascinates me. Yeah, so actually I'm, 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 I'm also very excited because we, can't, we really can compute something what I believe nobody can compute. So we tried simply to extract from this as soon as, as much as possible and to try to, to put it in a, something useful for, 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 for you guys, I mean, for, for those who are using this. You know, and what, what blew my mind is that I had never calculated the accelerations. I mean, you know, 350 G, I mean, you know, what, what is going on here? Yes, but it, it, imagine it's 50,000 G, can you imagine this? <laughs> well, of, something of course, else of course in, if you think in time, if you think in time, it would be a fraction of, of, of seconds, but it's always happened. So it's first you're accelerating, then you're decelerating in that type of, 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 of fashion. I mean, it's un of clear that my idea to sit on the correct tip was wrong. <laughs> was wrong. Well, it's, it's pretty dangerous. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Anyways, thank you again. And, and a real pleasure to meet you and, and to listen to this talk. It was, it was outstanding. Thank you very much.